Okay, so let's start. Okay, so this is going to be a presentation about um, next generation wikis. And it's when you, uh, I'll explain what it is, what we mean by that. So I'm Ludovic Dubost. Uh, I'm the founder and um, CEO of XWiki. So uh, we're going to talk quickly explain what XWiki is. What is a next generation wiki? Uh, I'll do a, a demo, uh, show some capabilities and what you can do with it. And uh, what it means to be a dev platform and what wikis can become in the future. So uh, XWiki is an open source project. I started in 2004. I, I used wikis before. Um, I used Twiki before uh, creating XWiki. And uh, uh, I realized how powerful it was uh, when you were using it uh, in enterprise collaboration. Um, and I built, uh, as, as I was using uh, wikis inside my, uh, my the company I was before, uh, I headed a team of uh, um, about 30 people and, uh, and we spread the wiki usage to in all teams uh, of the company and I build a vision of what wikis should be able to do to actually become more compelling to organization. First they need it to be a bit more easy to use and nicer, easier to install. At the time it was a bit tough to install a wiki and, uh, and make it run properly. So there was an interesting thing to do to provide services around wikis. Uh, currently, we have about 20,000 20, 20, downloads per month, hundreds of, of um, uh, thousands of users. We don't really have good numbers about the amount of real installation. Um, uh, our company, so XWiki is, a, is both a software and has been thought about being a company at the same time. So the objective was to be an open source company from the day one of building the software. Um, and that came from seeing how, how uh, open source changed the way uh, um, you would purchase, uh, you would buy software when you're a user. I was more a user about on, on, of software before. I was a, a CTO of a company, I was user uh, of software, and I saw how open source would change my, my uh, decision making. So I thought that since I wanted to build a company, it should be right away about what the future of software company should be, which is in my belief open source. Um, and, but in my history, I mean, it, it's not that easy to be an open source company uh, because uh, customers don't necessarily um, put a huge importance of you being open source. And when you're doing innovation like wikis, um, uh, well, it could be it could be easier if everybody that liked your, your innovation would, would buy it instead of using it for free. So it's not necessarily easy, uh, but I believe it's the future and that in the end, when you're a mainstream company, it's actually important that you be. Um, we're supported uh, also by French research projects. So we, we got some funding uh, through uh, uh, R&D projects. And so we had the, we were also working with a research organization like Inria um, uh, through this project and with some other open source company like Mandriva or, or like Nuxeo, uh, which are other French open source companies. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we have many users and customers. So we are actually big, big companies using, uh, using our software. Uh, in France, we have Agence France Presse. Uh, uh, we also have um, Aelia, which is a subsidiary of Lagardère, which is a big French group. Uh, EADS um, defense group and aeronautics and EMC in the US and also Kuriki which is a non-profit organization uh, that um, uh, where you can actually go see it's kuriki.org and they use Xwiki. It's the kuriki.org site is done with Xwiki and it's about uh, um, uh, teachers creating educational resources so it's kind of o open source in the uh, uh, on the content side for for edu educational resources. So and what is XWiki? Um, our current version of XWiki, well actually the XWiki 1.0 version is very strong wiki. Uh, it has comments, attachment history, it has user rights, PDF exports, a lot of possibilities to customize, and also the possibility to run multiple wikis inside the same uh, installation. It's Java based. Um, 
it, it, it's a wiki that has been sought for enterprise usage for inside, inside companies and uh, trying to solve uh, the problems that uh, people have. So uh, what we see is that uh, professional uh, companies are asking for user rights, they're asking for a PDF, that's kind of important. Uh, they're also asking for, we'll see, uh, abil ability to import office files uh, so that they can retrieve additional data. And bigger companies, big companies are, uh, want to run multiple wikis uh, and so the IT departments like to have multi uh, multiple wikis on the same installation. So what is exactly, what do we exactly call a next-gen wiki? So first, what do we call a 1.0 wiki? So basically, that's Wikipedia, so you get a text interface to edit. And what we've seen when we started uh, showing wikis to customers uh, is like, hey, what's wiki markup? Uh, how can I, why would I learn that? I want the WYSIWYG editor. So the first thing they ask for is a WYSIWYG editor. Um, and basically, it's mostly content. So you get content, you get a bit of tags, but it's content. And what we believe is that, uh, uh, that wikis can be used for more than just text content. Uh, it, can, it can be used basically for almost all the collaboration inside, inside companies. So it, can be used o it should also be used for uh, word files, so you can attach word files. You should also be able to uh, work on structured data. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, you consider uh, if, you, if you want to, to manage information about projects, you want to be able to structure what a project is. You just don't want only to have a wiki page, which, which is the text of what a project is. You want to be able to say that a project has a project name, a project uh, timeline, a date of start, a project uh, manager, project members. Uh, you want to be able to structure what your, uh, uh, what your information is about. And this is true for basically a lot of the information that you might want to put in your wiki. And you want to be able to collaborate uh, so both on, on this free form information and this, this structured information. And once you start giving the possibility to the wiki to, to manage both type of information, well, you, you can actually expand the use that you do from wikis. So you can do project management, you can do uh, tr uh, uh, training, uh, so do uh, um, education with your wiki, documentation, technical documentation. Uh, you, you can do many, many different, many different things. A wiki is quite agnostic about what you do, what you can do with it. Uh, and that's something sometimes a bit difficult for, for, uh, for customers, for companies that want to start using wikis is that we kind of tell them, hey, look, it's about bit what you want to do with it. And they would like to be more directed, uh, like they, 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 uh, uh, they, they would like us to provide them with templates uh, for different types of usages of the wiki. Um, so what, what, um, uh, what they want to see is they want to see uh, uh, something that is much nicer, uh, much, much more designed, especially when you, when you want to go to non-techies, uh, they want a nice look and feel. Uh, uh, they want to, they they want to also uh, to be able to do some communication with the content that they put on the wiki. That's something we've seen a lot with uh, with wiki usage. Is that uh, uh, initially it's like more inside tech tech groups and they put content and people value a lot the information itself and not how it's presented. But when you go to other groups, uh, uh, other types of uh, people in companies they value much more the presentation of the information. So basically, uh, wiki tools need to be able to present it nicely. Uh, so that's where you need the WYSIWYG editor. They're asking for more features in the WYSIWYG editor. They're asking for be able to change the font, the colors. This is something that, uh, 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 like, when you're using wikis inside tech groups, you don't see. Um, and um, what you can do once you, you think about structured information, that you, uh, you can do custom views. So, uh, do I have a, no, I don't have something to present, so, the red stuff. So, oops, what did I do here? Yeah, so if you, if you take a page like that, you have the wiki content that is here, and here you have structured, structured content. So the title, uh, and you, we know that this page is a, is a specific type. So we're on, on this tab, uh, which means this page had a, had a specific structure. 
uh, which was considered as an analysis. And, uh, and then you, we also have ratings features that come with it. And, and so you have a view that is different depending on the type of content you have in your wiki. So if it's standard text, you will have just a text view. And if it's a project, you'll have a specific project view. And if it's a user, you'll have a specific user view. And that's typically the type of stuff that uh, uh, you, you, you are able to do once you have the structured information inside your, inside your wiki. You can also have a lot of metadata. So for example, it's the same document in edit mode. So here you have your editing in, uh, in a WYSIWYG editor. Uh, but here you have a tree where you can assign categories to your information. So uh, these are uh, uh, metadata that can be added to the document. Uh, another example of structured data, so this is Kuriki, uh, where you have uh, behind the content itself, uh, you have the educational metadata that is assigned to the, to the document, to the wiki document. So here, same thing, uh, tree, uh, and here, a title, etc. So what's powerful with XWiki is that uh, you, can, you can actually collaborate um, uh, on these metadata structures. So you can manage these metadata structures fully through the web interface of the wiki. So it's not uh, necessarily, uh, uh, pro it's not programming to manage these metadata structures. It's actually part of the, the wiki feature. Oops, wrong way. Yeah. Uh, so nice look and feel again. So here is a, this is actually also XWiki, and it's also a wiki page which has a very specific view uh, and look and feel. And uh, it's this, the same application. This is where we edit the metadata going out with the page. So in our view, uh, we, we basically we think the wiki is able, is able to receive all types of information, whether it is freeform content, uh, structured data, for which we can provide standard applications, like for example, a blog or a FAQ application. So this is structured data that is quite common, a bit the same for everybody's need. So we provide these applications. Structured data that the, the user will develop himself, corresponding to his own type of information that is of interest to him. And also uh, information that is already uh, in the enterprise network. So it can be a CRM application or a database and this is where you can actually also bring in bringing data inside the wiki using mashup. Uh, so uh, this is why, why we built XWiki for being able to kind of be the uh, the point where you can you can gather and organize the information. And the reasons why we did that is that we believe that the concept inside the wiki, the core concept, it's a linking. This is actually the core concept of the web in general. But the fact of being able able to edit your links yourself. The fact that the group of people can collaborate on the links, on organizing the content, deciding what the structures should be, this is the core, the core uh, invention that you have in a wiki. It's a capability for the people to participate in this process. And this leads to a better way, uh, a better organization of the information that you would have. And in the end, it leads to the success of collaboration. Uh, the, the, this is the main problem, in my view, with most collaborative systems is that they don't allow the people to participate. When, before I started using wikis, we had a simple document management system. And it had a tree, a uh, categorization tree, where to put the information. And basically, the time we took, uh, we took about uh, a month or two months to decide what the tree should be for the company. The time we took to decide it, it already had changed. Uh, in, in, it sh should already have changed because the company had already changed. And it basically, the, the, if you don't let users participate, you don't, get, um, uh, you don't get a system that moves at a sufficient speed, sufficient pace with, with the changes that actually occur to the organization. And uh, this is where we think it's really important that uh, you can gather and decide how to organize these things. Um, and the second idea is that once you start building these uh, small uh, structured application inside your wiki, so you can mix the content of these application with your uh, with your uh, with your content, but you also are able to do application um, at a much lower cost, collaborative application. And what's interesting is that uh, 
you start being able to do applications that you actually wouldn't be able to do. Uh, so basically, you can go actually in many companies and see that they, they're using Excel sheets to manage a certain set of information. And uh, well, it would be better to have a collaborative application than an Excel sheet to manage this information, but it's too costly to do an application around this information that they stick to using the Excel application. And uh, that's where uh, what we call the long tail of application. Basically, you have this possibility of doing applications you didn't have the possibility to do uh, at a much lower cost. And you have also the possibility to involve the people that have the know-how of what the application should do. Basically, the standard, the normal way of an enterprise to build application is you have the guy that has the idea, he does a specification, he gives it to the IT department, the IT department asks somebody to price the application, eventually they then they do the application, then they show it to the person that asked for it, and then he realized that it's not exactly what he wanted. And, uh, and you can do it in a very different way once you use this type of tool. Like you can have a, the, the guy that has a need with an intern, and they can actually do the application almost together, uh, on, on through the web browser using the system and potentially get to uh, a closer result of what they need. And that's actually very interesting. Um, so before I go into a, a demo and show some examples of what you can do with the tool, is um, so we, came, we just came up with our 2.0 version. So a 2.0 version of what we call Wiki 2.0. Um, it's uh, because now it's been f uh, five years that we develop uh, this tool. And uh, 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 so we, we manage this structure content. We have a brand new WYSIWYG editor. So we've built our own WYSIWYG editor. Uh, we've, we found that uh, uh, we, uh, the WYSIWYG editor we were using before and that exists on the web, they actually are not uh, good for wikis. Uh, they're okay for CMS, for, for websites, but they're not good for wikis um, because you, you, you can't control the content enough, uh, especially if people are using different browsers. Uh, if they're using a mixed set of browsers, i.e. And, and Firefox, they will, they will, it will change too much the, the content. When just like if you edit in IE a document that was first edited in Firefox, they change the HTML again and you will have problems. So basically, we need an editor that has much more control about what is generated. Also, because we're generating PDFs after. So we need very tight control about the content that is generated. And the second thing is we need tighter feature integrated uh, uh, with the wiki. And uh, so we've been able to do that. We did that in uh, GWT with the Google Web Toolkit. And we have a very tight control of what, uh, what is generated using this editor. I'll, I'll show it. Uh, we also have uh, Office importing, so we can import uh, um, any file supported by OpenOffice. We're using actually OpenOffice as a backend uh, uh, tool for that uh, to do the conversions. And we're transforming this to wiki content, so we can import Word and Excel files that transform to, uh, to wiki content or wiki tables. And we can also import um, uh, PowerPoints that transform to uh, images, and then they can be browsed uh, in the wiki. So they cannot be edited, but they can be browsed. Uh, we have done many, many usability improvements to make it easier and easier to use our to use XWiki. Uh, we have we're now supporting. So we have a new skin, and we have teams inside this skin. So it's we made it much easier to change the colors of your of of a uh, NixWiki installation. Uh, we have a new email notification watch list that shows you the changes in the wiki, and we have a concept of wiki macros which I will show. Uh, so you can build macros and make them available in the WYSIWYG editor, which is quite interesting to popularize macros to users because what we found is that. Even though it was not that easy, uh, basically macros inside your wiki markup or even in WYSIWYG, people never remember the parameters of the macros and never remember that they just exist, so they don't use them. Uh, and uh, it's very powerful what you can do with uh, just a limited set of macros inside a wiki, any wiki, uh, but people don't remember they exist, so they never use them. Uh, we have also web dev APIs, REST APIs, and uh, lots of uh, features for programmers. So let's do a demo. Before you go to the demo, yeah. Question sure. Um, I'm having difficulty uh, visualizing what or what to do, what to use macros for. Could you give us a specific example? I'll show you. Okay. Um, okay. So let's start with okay here. 
let's see if I can go in full screen here. Do I have full screen here? F11. Yeah, good. Okay, so when when you install XWiki, um, so there's a bit more than the standard installation because I uh, this is a local installation on my computer. Uh, I did um, uh, I I did a, I installed a few applications on top of it and a little bit of content. Did some imports, but basically it's uh, it, it looks a bit like that. So you you have a, a d you start you have a dashboard. Uh, you see spaces, so you you can create spaces. Uh, so these are spaces of our content. You can see recent changes uh, that you have on the wiki. So in my wiki, it's like only me cha making changes, so it's not that interesting. But if you had uh, multiple people, you would have their photos here also. And I just customized this panel. So this is what we call panels, and you can control. So let's go just visit the administration screen. So the first thing you can do when you go inside a wiki, so you can do the administration screen. Uh, and you get a few things that you can administrate. So first thing is uh, you can make it multilingual uh, or not. Uh, you can actually switch it uh, to French, German. We have about 15 languages that are uh, translated. Um, you can actually help us for translation. I think the Dutch translation is not too bad. Uh, it's quite complete. What? It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good? You yeah. tried it? Oh, definitely. Oh, one, good. One, nine, three. Okay. And, um, uh, so we have actually a website, it's l10n.xwiki.org, where you can actually come contribute to the translation. Uh, basically every night it's taking the application resources file, uh, the, the, the translation uh, text strings, and it's loading them. So basically when you get to that website, you actually see if there is something to translate. Uh, and you can just go and our development team is, uh, before every release, is, uh, uh, tr is trying uh, to uh, be in time to take these changes uh, and integrate them uh, in the build. Uh, we also have built a review system for the translations, uh, but we don't have necessarily enough translators right now to really go into a very uh, 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 strict process of reviewing. But if we have multiple people, then we can have one person do it and another person reviewing it, so we have two checks before it actually goes into the main product. Um, it's it's actually a wiki application, so I can actually, yeah, it's actually an application I could show. Uh, if if the web, if uh, wait one second, if the let's see if it uh, if the network works fine. I I did the demo locally because yesterday network was not going so well. So oops, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. So th that's our our wiki. Um, it's our application that we built in XWiki to manage translations. So if you go here, so basically what we do is every translation string is transformed to a wiki page, a structured wiki page, and uh, every language translation to another page, and then we match, we see uh, which one are missing. So for example, here if you go in the uh, application, so it basically tells us the number of uh, uh, empty translations. So here it might be calculating how many translation is left. Uh, so it's a b it, that might be a reason why it's a bit long. Uh, it, it's calculating uh, every time there is a change to the translation, it needs to recalculate. So uh, it can take a bit of time uh, to to get there. So here, for example, you can see like the French the French translation. There we have about two thousand strings in the whole uh, uh, application, and we have six that are empty, nine outdated, and Etc. And then there are 28 that ha have not been reviewed, and things like that. So here, if we go to the Dutch one, mm -hmm. uh, which is yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know. I think it's at the end. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah we're still missing thousand trans. No, we're still missing thousand translations. So it's uh, we still have uh, some work. Uh, so uh, we still have some work to do here. Um, to uh, but we already have thousand translation existing. Actually, yeah, yeah. Latvian is uh, has only hundred missing, but we're really adding uh, very quickly uh, tr translation strings. So if you want to help, don't hesitate. Um, so let's go back to the wiki here. Oops. Yeah. So. 
And you can run your wiki in multilingual mode. That means that if a guy, if a user comes in with a Dutch browser, he'll get the wiki. He'll get the wiki in Dutch, both the the the, the core application UI, but also the content. Like every page, every URL can have a page, a content per language. And if there is a translation for your for this language, it will take it. If it if it doesn't find, it will take the default page, uh, which usually people do in English. Um, and uh, but you can decide that your wiki is only one language. So in, in this case, the UI will be only in, uh, in, in that language, even if your browser is Dutch or German or whatever. Um, and, if, and when people switch language, it will keep a cookie so that, uh, uh, that you know in, uh, that you stay in, uh, in that language. Uh, you can decide whether your uh, wiki is using WYSIWYG or not. So wait, I need to get rid of that, yeah. Fine, um, and uh, and you can configure your mail servers, things like that. Uh, so you can uh, choose your your presentation. So here you can actually control what what is it going to be in your title bar of your wiki. You can control what metadata is going to be added to the HTML pages. So that that's actually useful for uh, for public wikis and when you get indexed by Google. You can decide whether you have uh, panels on the left, on the right, or both. So you can have these menus. Uh, and e each of these menus on the left, on the right here, each of these menus are actually a wiki page. So you can actually create new ones uh, and, uh, and enhance very easily the, uh, the, these applications, the, these little modules. You can create modules. Uh, you can change the copyright notice, uh, and you can change the skin, and here the color team. So, for example, so I really want to get rid of that one, which is painful. Yeah, I think it's better now. So here, for example, I should be able to uh, to choose like peach, for example, and save. If it works. F11. Yeah. So I shift reload and I, I get the new skin uh, in the new color. And, uh, and so color teams, for example, so if I, oops. Ah, browser, please. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm using, uh, it's not a very good computer because my other computer is broken. Okay, come on. Give it back. Okay, it's back. Um, so, for example, if I take the um, so the 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 peach team, which uh, I'm using right now. Uh, so th this is actually not on my wiki. One second, I need to switch wikis here. View color teams. So if I if I take the the peach team here, and now so this is actually a team is a structured page inside our wiki. So if I click edit on this team, I actually get a structured page. So now I can actually, for example, let's say I put that in red. Okay, and now I save. And now I shift reload, and I get my my title bar in red. Uh, and this management, this this uh, page that manages the color team, is built in XWiki. Uh, so uh, the application can be changed; its behavior can be changed fully through the web browser. I'll show some example of of that. Um, uh, so let's go back to the administration. 
So you can configure how registration is going to work. So if people are going to receive uh, uh, validation emails when they register or not, uh, you can choose. Um, uh, so there are a few programming uh, uh, um, parameters. For example, um, this field is interesting. It's a way to add uh, translation strings uh, to the wiki. So basically, if you have a page in your wiki which says key equals value, key equals value, key equals value, and you list this page here, automatically uh, the translation system of XWiki will take it into account. Uh, so you can actually override all the translations that are provided by default in the application on a per wiki basis. So suppose you have a, you have a wiki farm and uh, with multiple wikis there is the global translation for the whole farm. On one specific wiki you, there is a word that you don't want to use, you want to use a different word you can use a different word in this wiki. So you can actually do that through the, through the user interface. Um, so you have uh, strong users and groups management. Uh, so here, for example, you want to manage rights. Here you can, uh, uh, you can manage rights. You can search for users. You will only list the ones you have. So if you have a very big directory of users, it's very easy to, to find uh, a user and then you can assign specific rights, view, comment, edit, deleting, administration, allow to register a new user, uh, or uh, are the users allowed to program, which means are they allowed to access some specific APIs, uh, which can do more things. Uh, we'll, we'll see that also. Uh, so you have a groups management also. So for example, if I want to edit the administration group, here I can search for a user and I can make that user an administrator, for example. So it's, uh, we have a lot of these usability features, make it easy for people to, to manage their, their wiki. Um, we have importing and exporting of, of pages. So you can actually export your whole wiki as what we call the XAR package. So a XAR package is a zip of uh, of, of wiki pages, each page is stored in XML, and we can actually re-import it. So for example, if I show you the importing, uh, here I have a few things I imported in this wiki, so I can actually, uh, I can actually uh, click uh, here, and then I can decide to, I, I can decide just to import one of them or all of them. So these are just pages I can import uh, in, uh, in my wiki. Um, for exporting, the standard, in, the standard application only exports everything, but we also have a, uh, we also have a, a, a small add-on application uh, which allows to do selective exports. So you can just, uh, for example, let's say I, I, I want to export, so a, the, a demo I prepared here, this actually I did that. I prepared the demo in the train and uh, yesterday for here. And I'll show you just after. Uh, and uh, I actually installed that demo on, uh, on another wiki. Uh, and I did that by using this small application. I just say I want this page. And uh, uh, let's say, wait up. And I want also this page. I add them. And then I say export my package. Export. And I just get a XAR file. And then I go to the other wiki, I import this XAR file, and I just get the files in. And this is especially interesting. Uh, I mean, even this application, managing this export, is an application itself. So it's something that was imported in the wiki. Uh, if I it's actually this application here, so which is a set of a set of wiki pages that I imported in the wiki. So this small application where you can select files is fully written with the XWiki APIs. Okay, so I'll go into a small example of these XWiki APIs, uh, and at the same time I'll go into what these macros are. Um, so maybe I should start with a very small example and do it live, and then I'll show you a bit more complex example. 
So just to understand what you can do. Uh, simple script. So I create a page. I call it simple script. So I edit this page. So what happens is that I get into WYSIWYG. So I can decide to go to source mode, or I can actually decide to use a macro. And this is the new WYSIWYG. Actually. Oh, this is a new WYSIWYG, actually. Because uh, it looks the same. As the, uh, we use the same icons. Okay. But it's, it's completely different implementation. We, we use similar icons, but uh, it's a bit different. Uh, no, no, because it's not new in 2.0, the WYSIWYG. So maybe you, you, you in 193, you're using 193, you said. So you already have the new WYSIWYG editor. Oh, okay. 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 So the, the, w w the new WYSIWYG editor came for the first time in 1.8 and became default in 1.9. In okay? and, uh, and we have a few improvements now. So uh, we, we have a lot of bug fixes in 2.0. Okay. Okay. So actually, I can do a quick demo of the WYSIWYG editor. So here I can say title. So it's very standard WYSIWYG editor. This is some nice text. So what's interesting is that we have full screen. So you can switch to full screen. Uh, what's also interesting is that we have a in-place saving. So here, I just saved everything to the server. And I just stayed exactly where I was. So it's very uh, efficient when you're editing a large document. You just save, but you don't lose time to go back to where you were. Uh, and that's actually very, uh, very interesting. Uh, I, can, I can insert an image. So here, I can upload an image. So let's take that image, upload. So I can decide which size, or I can just say nothing. And here, I can, can resize my image, so nothing. Uh, pretty classic here. Um, I can make some links. So that's actually, that's a, that has changed versus your, your WYSIWYG. Mm -hmm. uh, we now basically don't go on, by default, we, we, we had the, this tree before. Okay, when you're doing a link. Now we're basically showing you the latest, the pages you recently edited. Uh, and, we're sh and you can also search for a specific page, which we find actually much more efficient. Uh, I, don't, we, I think with the tree is not going to be that useful. We found a lot of issues with the tree in terms of how it behaves when you have a very large wiki. And, uh, and we don't believe it's a, a great way to, uh, to find your links. But searching is a good way. So for example, if, if I want to, to do a link to my profile, uh, here, administrator, oh, let's do administrator. It's admin. Search here, so I can uh, I can go and uh, I get uh, I can make a link to uh, I don't know this page for example, and say select, and uh, create link. Okay, I created my link. Uh, you can create a link to um, also to attachments here. So an attachment in this page, so the image for example. But I can also go make a link to an attachment in another page in the wiki. So I can actually, uh, for example, this might have attachments. Yeah, here. Hop. So I can make a link to this attachment, for example. Um, so you have a table editor also. Uh, we also support uh, uh, justification, centering, uh, and uh, font and colors. But we don't activate them by default. So you can actually add these features uh, in the in the WYSIWYG uh, editor template. Uh, th they can be added. They exist actually in the WYSIWYG editor. So font colors, background color, and uh, center left right. Uh, we just don't want to promote them too much in a wiki because we believe that the wiki is mostly about the content, and uh, so we don't promote it by default. Um, and so you have this this word button here. Uh, which uh, you can either copy paste. Uh, so here you can copy paste. In, uh, when you're on a Linux computer like me, you can only copy paste uh, an HTML. Um, if you're on Windows, you can actually copy paste from Word uh, or from Excel, and it's going to import it and filter the content. Um, it won't take the images because that's actually impossible um, to capture images in a copy paste, uh, but it will uh, copy paste from, uh, from Microsoft Word. 
but you can also give directly give a word file here so for example let's uh, or uh, yeah let's do that let's have fun so I'm taking the presentation here so I import the presentation let's see what happens I've never done, done that oh, while it's busy maybe I can ask a small question yeah sure go ahead um, Yeah, so I actually didn't do anything. And one is that in MediaWiki, uh, when, when a page is pretty large and you've got several headings, he makes a table of contents mm. at the top. There is a macro. There is a macro. Oh, great. So that's question one. And um, what was the other one? Oh, I'll come to that later. Subtitle. So actually, so here I've created title and subtitle. So OK, I save the content. And now I can do insert macro. And uh, I choose uh, TOC, so I actually have categories of macro. Uh, so for example, I choose navigation, say table of contents, mm -hmm. select. And I can say, OK, do I start to level one, uh, title one, or, or <coughs> more? So let's say start with uh, table one, and here is my TOC. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's actually pretty unique. It's the macro is visible in WYSIWYG, so it's actually rendered real time. Uh, so if I if I change my subtitle here, it's not changing. So if I click here, I can say, uh, oops, let's say, wait, refresh. And uh, my macro is refreshed. So it actually did a round trip to the server to, uh, uh, to uh, regenerate the macro uh, in WYSIWYG. So you can actually not edit it here. The only thing you can do is if you double click, you get the editing macro again. So now you can change the, say, OK, I want only at level 2. So that was a bug. Interesting. Right. It, it doubled the macro. So I have to check that why it did that. Uh, so here you uh, you can uh, you can view. So now if I view my page, I get this. So about the wiki macro, the wiki macro thing is that. So these macros are standard. They're given with the wiki table of content, and most of them are actually written in Java. The macros, but. What we introduced in XWiki 2.0 is that we introduced the possibility to write macros in scripting and store these macros in the wiki. So uh, let's see the example here. So if I insert my macro, I have a macro here, which is a to-do macro. This macro did not exist in the standard installation. Uh, so I can select that macro. And this macro has field status priority assigning. So for example, if I say open, and I say priority high, and this is a test to do. And now I insert my macro. And so here I have my, my macro content. And, uh, and now let's say, so it just, I can save it, OK? So, Okay, so my macro is uh, in, uh, in, in, I see orange here. I have a little icon that was added, and I actually can change the, uh, the status. So I can say resolved. Okay? And this macro, I'll show you the code. I wrote it since yesterday. <coughs> okay, in the train, it takes uh, two or three hours. Can you just answer my question? Yeah, How, what? You want to see the code. So let's go see the code. So oh, I'll search my to-do macro. Uh, so my macro is actually using three things. One is the, the macro itself. So I go in object mode. So this is actually an advanced mode for developers. So my macro is a page that contains this class. So what you have to understand is everything in XWiki is a page. And a page can contain content, attachments, but it can contain something that's what that is called objects. Objects rely on classes. So it's very much object-oriented programming. There is a class that defines what the object is, and then there is a page that uses that class to do an object. So here we have the macro class, which we added. So here we said my macro 
my macro ID is to do and my macro name is to do and my macro description is to do macro and uh, I ha it goes in the default category content so that that's how it gets categorized in the WYSIWYG editor depending of on which category I put it in whether it supports inline mode I won't go into detail uh, what this is uh, it says whether there is a content field I, I won't go too much into what it is and uh, here is my code so here is the code of my macro um, so this is and basically this code you can use it anywhere in the wiki any page can use that type of code in this case we just used it in this reusable macro so that it becomes available in the WYSIWYG editor okay but uh, this scripting language is available everywhere in the wiki it's based on velocity which is a scripting language uh, uh, that is uh, from the Apache Foundation uh, so it's a templating language and it calls our XWiki API uh, so here so here it's just doing a, a counter just to add one here it's actually saying that it wants to use specific CSS and GS JavaScript so whenever this is called it's going to add dynamically JavaScript and CSS to the page okay, this is that allows the orange color the orange color was defined in a, C in a, in a CSS uh, page and the CSS page is added s thanks to this call so this allows us to separate uh, the JavaScript and CSS which is a better standard uh, behavior than to embed it directly in the page uh, here this is how I get the, 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 the content uh, uh, the status field of my macro the priority field of my macro and then I use that to be uh, let's show the important part of the code it's basically here so for example here is where I actually display the block so let's say I don't like to okay yeah to do I don't like to do I like task okay yeah. okay I don't like the word to do um, I'll, I'll save that just after here this is the little JavaScript button the edit button and it's calling back to JavaScript and it's actually getting a skin file of uh, the edit the icon itself from our skin directory okay so uh, it's actually getting it from the skin and uh, and this part under it is uh, actually when you click on the edit button the the small edit interface with the form so yet you can choose your status and you can change the status okay so this these these three here are the definitions of my field assignee assignee so let's say I say enter the assignee okay I say here enter the status okay so each of these fields actually we can edit in full screen so it's very uh, practical if you have too much uh, code so I can save here okay so now I can go back to my my to-do page my my sample page I had simple script here Up. okay I reload the page and I get task okay I I can edit in WYSIWYG I can click here and I can do edit macro and here I get enter the status enter the assignee instead of what was there before so it dynamically took my definition okay so if I want to add just a new field I just need to add a I can actually do that okay so uh, to do macro I can go back to my to do macro and I do edit objects and here I want to add a field I just decide to use one more object so here macro parameter class and I say add object 
Okay, I have one more object here, and I say, I don't know, what could it be? Uh, uh, what? Date of uh, target date. Okay, say target date. Okay, and I can say whether it's mandatory or not. So I can save it, and now if I go back to my to-do here, no, it was not that one here. Uh, so actually, I don't know if I need to reload my WYSIWYG or not. We'll try it without reloading, edit macro properties. Uh, no, I need to reload, so I reload my WYSIWYG here. I click on my macro and I say edit macro properties and I get my uh, target date field that was added to it. Uh, so it's, it's highly dynamic uh, what, you, what you can do uh, in terms and everything is based on this model so it takes a bit of time to understand it like in just a demo it, takes a, it might be a bit a lot uh, but it, once you understood the basic mechanism around what a wiki page is and what a class and an object is Everything can be customized. Everything can be changed using this mechanism. What you can do in the in, uh, media wiki with a, a, an add-on is um, define a page as being a sort of a template for a new page, but not a strict template. You just can do that. Just a copy, and then you can change it all the way around. Yeah. It, so you can do it also. With so, uh, you first thing is uh, it's actually very easy to uh, let's say I want to create a new page. And I say uh, template equals main dot web home. And um, sorry, I need to do edit. And it just copied the content over. Okay, so okay. it's just we uh, we don't really have a UI to actually tell you, uh, choose your template or things like that. Uh, but you just need to add it at the parameters of the URL. But we actually, the thing is, in XWiki, we, uh, I, mean, I don't like too much the notion of template because the problem is, you end, and this is where we, we try to promote more the notion of forms uh, because the problem of templates is that, and in, in the guy at Wikipedia, they, they probably take ages to make sure all the, all the pages talking about a country are looking the same. Because they're not using a, a, a common model for these pages. They, every page has its own life. And uh, we believe that when the people on Wikipedia have the time to go through the content and do that work, in companies people don't have that time. So we believe they need to go more into a system where when you decide a type of content, you should have a common template and it's common and it's basically evolves together so if you change the way your user page should, is looking you change it for all user pages and so this is the way we promote more and this goes through the notion of developing classes and objects and things like that so I can show you uh, the, an example like that so let's go let's just finish the to-do macro example first um, my to-do macro as you can see you can edit and when you say change status it actually goes and change the content so this actually happens because in my, in my objects, I have a JavaScript function here. And uh, these JavaScript functions are actually displaying the field and then it's calling back to the server. Uh, it's calling back a specific page. So here actually, here is this call. Uh, it's this Ajax request here. So it's, it's making an Ajax request to a page called to do macro service. And this page is actually here. And it's, it's just a few lines here, um, which are, uh, uh, it's getting the document with the parameter page that was given and it's, it's uh, sending this document to a groovy script, which is here. And let's go see the groovy script, because that's where the most of the logic is. So uh, groovy is, uh, uh, I don't know, how many people do know groovy here? 
So it, it's a scripting language. Um, so Velocity is a templating language. It's mostly efficient to uh, make templates, make nice looking pages. So it's more like to do mix HTML with, uh, uh, with scripting. Groovy is more a programming language. So it's very similar to Java, but it's scripted. So it's compiled on the fly. It's compiled to Java bytecode, and then it's run uh, uh, automatically. So this is actually a Groovy class. So, and the Groovy class is stored in a wiki page. So what the previous script was doing is that it was compiling this Groovy class and then running it. Uh, it's only compiled once because there is a cache. So if you change it, it's going to be recompiled, but otherwise it won't be recompiled. Uh, so it's quite efficient. And here, uh, basically, when you, when you change the, w when you call this, this function, we called it, we gave a new status, open to resolved and priority high to priority low. And this information is actually stored in the content of our page, in the macro. So uh, in wiki syntax, in our WYSIWYG, the macro is bracket brackets to do. And then the priority is set inside these little set of information. Uh, so let me actually show you that example. Uh, test uh, to do here. So this is a page with a bunch of to dos. If you edit in wiki, this is how it's stored. OK. And so this little script here in Groovy, uh, which is here. Up. Yeah. The script in Groovy is actually going to read the document, parse it, and change the values inside these macros. And so we're actually using a nice API for that. We, we, have, a, uh, we have an internal API which actually is able to, uh, to read you the document and give you the macros. So this is what I do here, like give me all the block macros. And if the macro is called to do, then, uh, uh, then I found it and I modify it. Uh, I could have just do a regular expression and try to make the modification just using strings. Okay, that was also a possibility, but it would have been much less efficient. Uh, especially, uh, it would have worked if there was only one macro in the page. With multiple macro, it would have been a pain to find the, the third one and modify the third one. Using this, this API, uh, which is provided by XWiki to parse wiki syntax documents, I'm very sure that I'm going to find the right macro, and then I just need to say, change the parameter value, etc. <coughs> and then in the end, when I made the change on the content, I just need to, uh, I just need to say save and, and my document is saved. So actually, this is happening here. Like here, I save my document. Okay. This, these uh, little APIs like save API or get document API, you, can act, you have the whole wiki API is like that. So you can get the number of attachments, uh, get the list of attachments, things like that. Uh, yeah, so I'll go very quickly on the last thing. It's uh, uh, the to-do list here. Wait, up. So here I have my, my to-dos and it, they, work, they work nicely. And, uh, and now I have another script which I, I'm going to reload. And it's actually searching for all the to-dos in all the wiki. So here, I know this page has six to-dos, and this page has one to-do. This is the one I just added with you uh, doing it, and it works fine. And if you look at it, so this is actually a small script, uh, which is uh, uh, looking for the to-dos and displaying them. So this is, you can run a search on the wiki, find all the to-dos, etc. That's a, a type of example. Last example I want to show is more related to, uh, uh, so it's, for example, the user directory. Okay. So this is a component that we call the life table. Uh, these are users registered in the wiki. So they're using the same object mechanism to define what the user is. And this is a component doing searches. So if I Search admin, just remove to the limit. No. I can do the search here. I can say, uh, let's search for webmaster. And so, same thing, I can configure uh, very much. This is just a simple script. 
uh, and say, oh, it's not the email I want, I want to show the city. And I have the city definition here, and I just need to save my page. And I got my, my page, first name, last name, city. Okay, and it's the same with that. My administrator page can be completely customized using changes of scripts. So everything of that is controlled by a script. If I don't like something, I can go to the script page and modify it and control it. And the last thing I want to show is the meeting manager. So it's an example of an, uh, an application that is a bit uh, more uh, uh, tech meetings. Oops, meetings. So this is, for example, uh, a list of meetings. This is a meeting here. And I can go and I can, uh, I can say I want to add people to my meeting. So I get a small UI to add, a, to add something, to add a guy, for example. So I think I added all my users that I already had in my wiki, so I can do. Here I can edit the, con the content of my meeting. Uh, and I can say my meeting is finished, change its status, and it's going to change the metadata of the meeting. And you can actually move from standard wiki to these structured pages. And this is what I did on our intranet. We installed this meeting manager last week. And I had uh, 20 uh, meetings in wiki pages. And I just did a script to move them and add the structure to it. And they became available in a structured uh, application. So what's interesting is that you can use both. You can use both the wiki and the structured. And we always use that in all the wikis we, we do. We use always both systems. And we progressively add structure to a wiki. And this is what is powerful uh, and uh, what, what is the core concept of doing that in the wiki. We don't think that applications should be fully structured. We don't think that wikis should be fully unstructured. We think we should gradually evolve from unstructured to structure at, with the users, with the feedback of the users. And that's the power of doing all that in the wikis. Thank you very much. Welcome.